I'm going to tell you a secret today. There's something that many professional photographers do to give their photos a fine art, painterly look. It's actually a super, super easy technique, yet many people don't know about it or they don't know how to use it. So in this video today, I'm going to share my favorite hack for creating beautiful artistic photographs, including a step-by-step -step Photoshop tutorial. Let's get into it. So what is this secret sauce of photographers? What is it they doing to create images like this that look like paintings? The answer is they use fine art textures and overlays that they add in Photoshop. Yep, simple as that. The reason this works so well is that it gives your images more depth and it makes them look more like artworks than photos. Here are actually some textures I've been using in my photography. You can see, for example, they are marble textures, um, old photo paper textures, canvas textures, and so on. Now you might wonder where do you actually find these textures? And luckily these days that is super easy. You can go on royalty-free image platforms like Unsplash, uh, Pexels or Pixabay. I'm going to link those below as well. And then once you're on those sites, you just type in something like canvas texture, vintage photo texture or whatever. And then once you find a texture you like, simply download the largest possible file size. As an alternative, you could go on paid stock libraries. For example, I have used Adobe Stock before. The downside is it costs money, but they do have slightly better textures, so it might be worth having a look at that. Or, of course, you can simply shoot your own textures. If you do that, make sure to shoot in RAW format, so you have high image quality. And if you have it, also use a macro lens, because the textures will be sharper then. Let me now show you how I add those textures in Photoshop. But before I do that, just a quick reminder to subscribe to my channel if you like my videos. It really helps me a lot to create more content for you. So hit subscribe now. Back to the video. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Let's start with this portrait. So let me show you the steps. First of all, of course, open your base image, which I have done here. Then create a new layer. I always click on the plus symbol down here. Now, one of the best ways to add a texture to your Photoshop file is to use Place Embedded. So go up here to File, click on that, and then click on Place Embedded. That then brings you to your folder and you can choose the texture file you want to add. I'm going to use some Adobe Stock textures for this video, but you can use any textures you have. Let me add this one, which is a kind of canvas texture and then simply hit place. And now the texture has been added here on top of the base image and you can actually change the orientation and the size. So I'm just gonna make it fit the image, something like this, and then make sure to hit this check mark up here. Okay, so now you can see that it has actually automatically converted the texture layer into a smart object. You can see it because there's this little symbol here. This simply means that you can still adjust this layer whenever you want. So it's not like you make changes once and it stays like that forever, which can be annoying, but you can actually go back even if you add more layers on top and still make adjustments to this texture layer. Also, just one tip, if you now wanted to go back later and again change the size or the orientation of this texture layer, just hit Command T or Control T. That opens the free transform tool and now again you can see that you can make adjustments to the position. By the way, if you want to flip the texture, sometimes that's necessary, you can simply right click on a mouse or on a Mac, hit Control and click at the same time. And then this menu opens and you can see here at the bottom it says flip horizontal or vertical. That can be quite handy sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. And once you're done with the changes, again, hit the check mark. So we have the texture on top of the portrait. Now, one thing, if you don't want this texture in color, which I actually don't want for this portrait, you can make it black and white. Many ways to do it. I like using the black and white adjustment layer. Simply go down here to this circle symbol, click on it and then choose black and white. Now, I don't want this to affect the whole layer stack, but only the texture layer. So there's a little trick for that. Just click on this little sheet and arrow symbol here. And now it clips this black and white adjustment layer only to the texture layer. So it won't make any changes to anything else. Great, so we have this texture. Now it's black and white, but we don't see anything because the texture is at 100% opacity. So first you can always adjust the opacity of the texture layer, make sure you click back on the texture and let's play around with that. 
maybe I go down to here. And the other thing you definitely want to do most likely is to change the blend mode, which is done in this little drop down menu. It's now on normal, but you can just see which one you like best. This is really like an experimentation method. For example, in this photo, I quite like the lighten blend mode. So I'm gonna use that for now. Now, the next thing that you probably notice is that you have the texture everywhere and it doesn't really look so great often on the face or on the skin in general, or maybe you just don't want it at the same intensity in the whole picture. So simply mask it out where you don't want it. To do that, I like to add a layer mask. So make sure you're on the texture layer and then click on this little symbol here. Actually looks like a camera. <laughs> Now you have a layer mask added to the texture and then grab the brush tool. Make sure it's on a very, very soft brush. So hardness zero, then size. Yeah, make it pretty large so you can actually cover some ground and then change the opacity to fairly low, maybe somewhere around 20 or 30. And then finally, make sure your brush color is set to black. You can do that down here. And now you can paint out the areas where you don't want the texture. I'm gonna do it in the face a little bit here and maybe even on the clothes actually. In fact, on this photo, I might want the texture only in the background. So that's that. And then if you've done too much, you can always change back to white. Just hit X on the keyboard and then paint over it again to bring the texture back. Okay, let me show you this technique also on a different photo, just for a slightly different effect. So this is already kind of vintagey looking. So I want to add a sort of old photo texture to this. So we do the same thing, add a new layer, go to file, place embedded, and then I'm gonna grab this texture here. Again, adjust it to the photo, hit okay. And now let me show you the before and after here. So you see this has added this kind of vintage photo look, which I really like. Again, play around with the blend mode and yeah, find a look you're happy with. One last tip with textures, I never only use one because it can look a bit too obvious, too fake almost. So if you're doing this technique, try adding even three or four different textures, sort of combining them, blending them. It will make it look more organic and more artistic. And that's pretty much it. That's how I add fine art textures in Photoshop. By the way, one more thing. If you love taking portraits or self-portraits, make sure to check out my ebooks. They're actually completely free and they contain 50 ideas for portraits or self-portraits you can try at home. I'm going to link them below. That's it for today. Make sure to subscribe. See you next time.